Hey there, my name is Ryan Kingsline. I'm one of the founders of this school. And what we're going to do today, what I'm going to work with you now, is give you a sense of the, the spectrum, the path, so to speak, of what you need to cover to be able to show somebody that you can do this work. Now, the key thing and the premise behind all of this is that the principal thing you have to do is get the job done, not get the job done right. And that's a key part. That's something that a lot of people forget in the beginning. It, companies want people who can react, who can uh, change their strategy. They're not worried about this right way or that right way because things change on the ground when you're in production. They change fast, they change often. Can you change with them? That's important. So what you've got to do to get that job is you've got to show them a series of things. You've got to, number one, answer a question. So we're going to start with a question. And then you're going to have to show them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven really important things. You're going to show it in your work, and you're going to show it in your personality, and you're going to show it in the interview and the way in which you talk. So are you ready to start going down this path to see what you need to do, what you need to show, to make sure that you are at the top of that list, that candidate list? All right, let's start over here. We're going to start by asking this first question, OK? The first question, and it's the one that sets everything else up it sets all the other stuff that we have to do. It decides how we're going to do it. It decides you know, how much time we're going to spend on it. It decides everything about the results. So the first thing that we really need to tackle, we need to make sure that we understand, is who do we want to be working for? All right. Do you want to work for Naughty Dog? Do you want to work for Blizzard? Right? Who is the company? Or a lot of people, they don't, they don't quite have an answer for who. So the next question that you ask, or the way you reframe this, is what game. So what game kind of fits the world that you're interested in or that would be kind of fun for you, OK? Now, this is really important, because it, who or what, this is the target. This is the goal. Now, you don't go to Naughty Dog with a Blizzard portfolio, because they need Naughty Dog work, right? Again, most people that look at your work, I'd say there's a good percentage of people that are going to be looking at your work in terms of the hiring process, who are not qualified to judge you. They're not qualified to judge you in the way that you and I as artists think. When they look at something, they don't see the stuff that you see. All right? They don't see the problems. They don't see all of this. They're just comparing, is it an orc? Yes, it's an orc. And does that orc match our orc? Yes, that orc matches our orc. Or no, that does not match our orc. Right? That's the way it works. Okay. Now, there is a good percentage of people that will be able to judge you your leads, the art directors. you know, there's, Those guys know and they can see it. They've got to that position in their job. But the HR, those, they're just like orc, orc, troll, troll, elf, elf, realistic face, realistic face. right? It's as simple as that. And they're shuffling through scores of these things, just trying to, just trying to line up candidates for these jobs. So if you go to Naughty Dog and you've got a bunch of orcs, those better be some damn photo real orcs, right? You better make sure that you, these things look fucking amazing, all right? Or if you go to Blizzard or some of these other games like Swear Next or something like that, if you go there and you've got all this hyper real stuff, that does not tell them that you can dial that down. It does not tell them that you can stylize it, that you can give it a different quality. Okay, so you need to focus on what are those do, what are those people doing? How do they do it? You gather evidence. This is the first assignment in the boot camp. You gather evidence. You, you look at the artists. You look at their gum roads. You look at their talks, like at the ZBrush summits. right? You start looking at their wireframes. You start looking at anything that can give you information about the way they do stuff. Okay? And it all comes. This is the first question that we ask in the boot camp. It's the first thing that we do in there to get ourselves aligned to make sure that everything else fits that pattern. Now, if you look over here, anatomy. Anatomy changes if you're talking Naughty Dog or if you're talking Square Enix. There is differences in what's expected of you, and there's differences in what you know it, you can you should be able to do and accomplish. And you do not have to be a master. That's the number one thing here for me. You do not have to be a master of any of this because companies are looking for agile minds to go in there and solve problems. All right, so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to score these. This whole thing, everything is scored for you to give you a sense of things. So the first score you get is, hey, all right, you can do torsos, right? 
And remember, these are all triggers. People who are in the know know, OK, if your torsos are great, well, that's the beginner level. That's where everybody starts. All right, so the next thing that I look for, the thing that tells me somebody is more advanced, is are they looking at arms and legs? Have they started to get these things implemented? And then next step, have they started to look at elbows? Have they started to look at knees, right? I, I always look at elbows. I always look at knees. And if those aren't done, I know I'm talking to an amateur. I'm talking to somebody who's in the early stages. They haven't drilled down in their anatomy to really lock it in. Now, one really important part of this discussion is most game characters are covered with clothing. So you're not often going to have some naked dude running through a game. So anatomy is important, but it's not the, the end all be all. I don't want you to sit down and think, I don't know anatomy. I can't, I can't do this boot camp. No. It's not required. All right. It's my job to guide you on that path, but also to help you understand you only need so much of this. But then if you are applying for you know, something where there is anatomy involved, like let's say, for example, uh, an EA sports game or boxers or stuff like that. Like a long time ago, they were contacting me about how to do the muscles, how to get the simulations right, because everything changes. All right, anatomy becomes important. And you don't have to be a master. Again, they're looking for agile minds, people that can dive into it. So you start to dive into it. You understand, OK, so elbows and knees, I got to focus on that. Okay. Then the next thing that becomes really important that tells us that you've hit that next level is that you focus on heads. And you start to think about things like the lacrimal bone. You start to think about the different parts of the face. And you start to get the sense of movement here, whereas the rigidity of the skull. And then finally, you start to get the skin. And you go into pores, and you go into wrinkles, and all of that stuff. All right. When you get down here, you're getting, you're getting scored at a five. So think about right now where you are and think about that score. Are you at about a two? OK. This doesn't disqualify you. This is just where you are so that when we have a conversation, you can start to tell me where you are here. Now, the next thing, as I said, anatomy is only one part of this. OK, but everything that I, er, most of my body is covered by clothing. There, are landmarks. So there are folds that are happening here because of the clavicle and the acromial process. Okay? There are those elements. There are things that are happening here in my belt line because of the ilium and the hip and the gluteus medius and all of these different parts of me. Okay? So that's all relevant, but it doesn't require mastery. So here's, let's talk about clothing and props. And what tells me where you are in the spectrum. So if you're doing simple extractions, OK, great. You know, and these extractions could be in ZBrush. They could also be in Maya. You can just kind of pull things out. All right. So you're at a level one. Now, if you're getting into polygonal modeling, if you're getting into the things like where you're in Maya or you know, you're really working this stuff with ZModeler, then you're getting into a level two in terms of clothing and props. All right. That's not the end all be all. Just I'm talking about basic polygonal modeling where you have just some sense of, of uh, let's say, a medium resolution uh, polygon pipeline. All right. Then stage three, you're starting to get into things like Marvelous Designer. All right. Even for stylized stuff, you start to get into Marvelous Designer or tools like this to help you really start to understand things, really start to just see how stuff works. All right. Then you come in another level. Do you have to sculpt everything that's in a game? Think about this. Think about the bean counters. Like Most game companies, there's a lot of them, publicly traded. If they're not publicly traded, they're privately held, and they have to return something on their investment. So you and I, we think, OK, we never use scans. Never, ever use scans. Don't ever use scans. But then it saves money, because Marvelous Designer or sculpting by hand might take for freaking ever. If you have to do a backpack. And you have to build that backpack in Marvelous Designer versus, hey, Johnny, let me borrow your backpack. We're going to go scan this thing in. It looks very gnarly. It looks like you've had a skateboard jacked into that thing, and you've worn out the bottom of it, right? And that's, you, where are you going to get that? Are you going to sculpt that from scratch? Or are you going to scan it and retopologize it? Because that's what's needed for the game. That's what's needed to move the needle forward in the game. All right? And you have to remember that what our goal is is to move the needle forward in the game and in ourselves. 
So don't get caught into the lie that you have to be a great artist, and you being a great artist means you know how to do all this stuff by hand, where you handcraft every polygon in there. Don't do that. It's not true. You have a job to get done. And this is actually what we do in the boot camp. We go through this phase, and if people don't have the boots done by week five, we go, look, get the scan data. Retopologize this because you are behind. You need to move forward. So I don't want to see this modeled. I want to see this scanned. I want to see this done because that's what we need. You have to get this project done. All right. Now, this is something you'll see in guys like um, in Adam Scutt. You'll see them doing marvelous designer and sculpting. That's when you really, I mean, that's like, it's high level stuff, right? You know, but again, don't get caught in the trap that that's the only thing that you can do. Keep in mind, scan is a very viable option, but then when you do do Marvelous Designer, don't just get stuck there, sculpt it. Because people spin in Marvelous Designer, they spin trying to make it do what they want it to do, but you can do amazing things if you just add into that a little bit of sculpting, all right? So clothing and props, this is all really important. You've got to have that. A lot of people, they focus, and they just, they just focus on anatomy, and they're like, hey, if they see my anatomy, then they'll see I'm good. No, they will not. No, they will not. They need to see what they need to see. And what they need to see is orc, orc. Realistic face, realistic face. That's it. It's a job. This is a business to them. It's an art and a craft to us, but it's also a business. You gotta make sure that you're triggering them in the right way to understand that you can do this job, all right? So, make sure that you put clothing in there. Make sure that that clothing is taken to the right level, all right? Now, the next thing that we look at is we look at texturing. So, where are you in your texturing pipeline? How would you rate yourself, right? So we could rate ourselves artistically, or we can just look and see what software we use, and that'll help us understand like, how advanced we are in this entire process. So the most, the beginner, let's say, ZBrush poly painting. That's a foundation. You ZBrush, you poly paint, and it looks good. All right, that's great. That's fantastic. It's not going to make it all the way to a game, but that's good. That's our foundation to help us understand what we need to do. All right, now to take that a step further, you get into Photoshop and you start working your UVs. And you start making sure that in terms of the UV patterns, this is optimized and it looks realistic and it looks good in Marmoset or something of that nature, right? And I put this at a two because this is a long time ago. This has been around for a while. The next stage of this is that you start using ZBrush, you start using Spotlight, and you combine it with Photoshop and UVs. And you start really working this, okay? But again, these are all old. This is like at least three, four years old of processes. This is stuff I was training on when I worked at Pixelogic a long time ago. Okay, now, Substance Painter. Substance Painter becomes that next part of the equation. And really understanding how this works to get you, you know, great results in what you're doing, in your work, okay? Then coming in here and moving in with Substance, over to Mari, starting to work with really large maps. Like, that's the cream of the crop. It's not even games at this point, it's film. But this gives you a spectrum of where you are in the equation and how you can start to trigger people to see that, number one, you're serious about this. Number two, you know your shit. You know what this is about. You're not some looky-loo here to just kind of, you know, have fun. But you're serious. You've put the time in. Okay, now let's take a look at this next thing. The next thing that really helps people understand where you are is topology. Topology is a bit of, uh, it's one of those things where people really get locked into uh, these expectations. It has to be right, I have to know how this guy does it, I have to know how that guy does it. I've been doing this for a long time, all right? And most of the time, topology is a flow state. You're just in it and you're doing stuff and it gets better, right? But you just got to understand a certain principle. So let's walk you through the simple, just the way I want you to think about topology. All right, the first step is super, super simple, right? And it's just Dynamesh. I'm just saying, can you control Dynamesh so that you can do projections in between subtools, so that you can combine objects, merge them, and then Z remesh them later? Could you, do you have control over this so that you can make that happen? This isn't game stuff. 
right? This is an animation stuff. Then the next phase is you get in and you start working with Z remesher. And you start really understanding a little bit of how to simplify things. So you're using Dynamesh, Z remesher. Then you come in and you might be using Z modeler to make these things a little bit more complicated, right? And these again are all like these to me are level three. Okay, but people who are really pro at this stuff, they don't use Z modeler because Z modeler is working its way up with its own agenda to try to be an intuitive, very intuitive piece of software. But those who have been doing this for a bit, they'll just use Maya's tools. Used to be things like Next, but they'll just use Maya's tools or Max's tools to just keep this as powerful as possible so that marking menus are being used, all kinds of stuff. And by Maya, I mean Max, I mean Softimage, I mean Modo. I mean advanced polygonal modelers that are focused on that where you are really looking about extrudes and chamfers and connecting vertices and really working that, okay? Great stuff when you're looking at wireframes you're using like Maya's Live, for example, to kind of redo the topology. You're not over here in Z Modeler or ZBrush or anything like that. You're over here in Maya really working it. That tells me you're serious about topology, all right? It's a trigger for me. Then as we come down, the next thing that happens is everybody comes all the way down here and they focus on edge flow and animation. But edge flow for animation, that's not, the end, that's not the thing that needs to happen. It is the holy grail, but it is also the shoals upon which many a young man and a young girl, young woman were uh, wrecked upon, all right? Men and women both have been wrecked upon the shoals of trying to get that perfect topology. When it would have been enough for them to simply Dynamesh to combine, Z remesh to get simple topology so that you could UV it, and then maybe later work on, uh, let's say, Maya to optimize the topology flow, right? Or go through some projection process. This, you're serious, but this is also serious, serious work, and it's not required necessarily, all right? It's its own beast, it takes its own time. Now, We've talked about, what, four items? We've talked about anatomy, all right? So let's go over here and refresh ourselves. So when we're talking about anatomy, we're talking about things like torsos. We're talking about arms. Very specifically, we're talking about the turning point. Make sure you do elbows. Make sure you do knees, all right? Now, as we go, we're talking about clothing and making sure that you get in with Marvelous Designer or you get in there with, with some scan data and you really get in and you optimize this stuff. There's amazing things you can do in these programs. You know, and there's a lot that happens in props. So don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to cover everything. I'm just giving you trigger items that say, hey, I'm serious. All right, now the next thing that we do, we look at texturing, and what you see us moving from is this poly painting to these more advanced pieces of software. This is one of the biggest pieces of software right now that tells people you're serious. In fact, if I was to give you advice right now, I would say learn Substance Painter, create some awesome tutorials on that, and then combine that with your awesome game art work. And you're gonna start getting exposure like you haven't had before, all right? That's one of the things that we also teach in the boot camp in the artist impact side of it, where I teach people how to do what I do, which is to promote my company, the artists that come with me, by basically sharing and just spreading the love, right? Just spreading the love. This is it's a great industry. There are difficult things. There are layoffs, just like there are every industry, right? This isn't just, you know, this isn't nirvana. But this is a fantastic place where if you have a great heart and you want to make a difference and you want to help people and you want to be better and you are willing to put the time in and develop the lifestyle that lets you do that, trust me, I understand it's hard. I got two kids. I got a business. It's hard. But if that's what you want to do, this business does pay you back and, and it does take care of you. You know, it's, it's a fantastic place, in my opinion. Now, rendering. The thing everybody forgets, all right? So you're only going to get a one if all you're doing is ZBrush exports. If all you're doing is screen grabs or document export or, you know, some simple render out of mental ray, you're only going to get a one, all right? 
That's all that's going to happen there. Now, you can get a better result if you get into ZBrush, you do BPR, or if you're in your mental rain, you start looking at um, some of their different physical-based rendering tools, things like that. You start getting into some of the ray casting stuff and some of the different materials. You can get a little bit better. Like, you can you get a two, okay, from me. But the real power comes in, when, and this is the trigger point, this is when you start doing Photoshop compositing. So you start taking multiple renders, things from everywhere under the sun, and you start to really combine these into one, in one awesome image. That's when you've triggered. And this is another one where, in my view, if you do this and you do it well and you create tutorials and you really start to share the love, you can really broaden your exposure to people and get work that you may not have been able to get before. All right, now. What comes after Photoshop compositing? If you're in the game world, Marmoset is the king. All right, I put it at a four because it's the king, but games are moving the film. And especially if you're in cinematics, right? Cinematics are pre-rendered, so they are in film, basically, just with game assets. So for a five, you got to look over here. You got to be at key shot. You got to be at V ray. But very specifically, also, you got to be at PBR. You got to be at physical based rendering things inside of Marmoset, inside of Substance Painter, inside of all of these programs. You got to start really diving into physical based rendering within a real time environment and see what you can just discover about making that work. That's going to be one of the keys. It's everybody goes through stages in this, all right? But one of the biggest mistakes that people make. You know what, I'm going to save that one. I'm going to save that one until we, because we're going to get there, all right? So before we do that, let's come over here and we're going to look at these elements. So this is like elements of design. This is your art. So we looked at one, two, three, four, five. We looked at five kind of specific things that you can tell people that you can do that trigger somebody to know, okay, he's serious. She's serious. She's dedicated to this and going to just rock this, right? Or, or no, not or, but after, after they've been triggered, now they have to understand how this works. How deep have you gone in the art? So have you just done it, right? This is like that moment where you're just like, I did it, mom, look, I made something. And we've all had that moment where we just like made something. We're so damn happy and so damn proud. And we wake up the next morning with a pride hangover where we're like, oh. OK, how do I delete that from the internet? And then we go about the process of deleting it. OK, now let's look at this very specifically, especially in terms of character art. I did it. Yay. Next thing, edge control. All right. Are you able to blur an edge between the deltoid and the bicep? Are you able to blur edges and get hard edges? OK, this is the, this is the meat and potatoes of sculpting. If you're doing clothing, are you able to blur a fold? So as it gets wider, it blurs. As it gets you know, more smaller and a little bit higher, then it starts to kind of become sharper in terms of the edges and the darkness, right? Do you have material control? Okay, this is really important. And I don't mean rendering. What I mean is, is if you're sculpting a knight in armor, right, which one of my students was doing, does that armor look like it's metal? Or does it look like it's basically a, you know, clay? How do you make it look like metal? What are the characteristics of metal? A little bit of noise, some angularity. And any time that the form kind of comes to a peak, you work that crease. You know, weld lines or whatever would work, right? Make it thick at the edge. You really work the material so that metal, jeans, Okay, another student of mine was doing, um, he'd done some, uh, he's doing this kind of, it's hard to say it was like a mech slash um, organic suit, right? And it had these kind of parachute stuff. So he'd done this beautiful tension folds inside of Marvelous Designer, took it into ZBrush and used the pinch brush. And it went from beautiful folds, most of it was beautiful, there's just one area that went from beautiful tension folds to sheet metal because it was pinched too tight, right? And another corollary could be instead of sheet metal, it could have been like silk. And silk has this tendency to fracture more, right? And especially if you crumple it up, then it'll leave those wrinkles in it, and there'll be really clear fracture and faceted lines, OK? And so that's what we had. So we had to go in there and look and say, OK, open this up. Take it from a straight line to some kind of nice curve. He did that, and it's beautiful. 
looks amazing, right? I'm proud of what these guys are accomplishing is just fantastic. What you are going to accomplish, right? As soon as we talk about this next one, you'll see one of the key things that, one of the key mistakes most people make, all right? So material control. I had a little mistake here, but I'm going to borrow from Odd Nerdrum in this one. The next thing that really tells somebody that you've kind of dove into this is you've developed a likeness. But after you've developed a likeness, because likeness isn't enough, after you've developed a likeness, you've got to go beyond a likeness. You've got to give it life. Right? There's a great artist, Michael Nolan. He has this one image I love of this guy's face. It looks realistic, but more importantly, it looks alive. His eyes just speak. It's so beautiful. We need to control edges, the mechanical stuff. We need to make it look like shit. You know, if it's armor, it's got to look like armor. If it's jeans, it's got to look like jeans. We've got to make it look like whatever it is. If it's Tom Hardy, try to look like Tom Hardy, right? Let's make it look like it is the essence of Tom Hardy. It is like Tom Hardy alive there in front of us with all of his pathos. So more alive than Tom Hardy would look himself, where it's him in the just deepest of his emotions. That's that next phase. That's one of the things we want to aim for. It doesn't happen right away. This is a process, all right? And that leads us to this next one. So the next element that we look at is your commitment. The next thing that's really going to make a difference, that's going to move the needle here, and the biggest mistake that people make is that they quit before they've got through the suck. The Marines have that saying, right? The suck. I've got the saying, the valley of the suck. You've got to walk through the valley of the suck, but more importantly, Think about your life. Think of it this way. You're here. What you want is over there. In between you here and what you want over there is everything you don't know. And learning and struggling and accomplishing isn't always pleasant. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes we don't think we can do it. Sometimes we don't think that we are really made for it. But we go through anyways. We push through anyways. Because it is what we need somewhere inside you. It's what you need. And it has got you to this point. So here you are. Here's what you want. And here's that massive valley of the suck that you have to go through. You go through it alone, and you've been going through it alone. Even if you've been in college, chances are you've gone through it alone. But with the boot camp, the goal is go through it with somebody else. Dante went through all those levels of hell with somebody, did he not, right? All right, so now, where's your commitment? Because that's going to be one of the things that I talk to you about. All right, when you schedule this phone call, this is going to be one of the things I talk to you about. Where's your commitment? And by commitment, I mean how much time are you willing to spend on a model? Are you going to spend one day? Is that where you feel like you should only spend one day? Do you think you should be able to have this done in three days, OK? Some people do, right? That's not going to be enough. Your work is never going to get through the amateur phase if all you do is spend three days, three days, three days, three days. You're going to be stuck at the, you're going to be stuck at the beginning of the valley of the suck because you haven't gone through all of the levels. All right, now, are you willing to spend one week on a model, full time, on one week on one model to make this thing awesome? Are you willing to spend a month? Or do you think a month is too long? You should have it done by then. Or are you ready to spend six months plus on a model, one model that you have no idea is going to look good, but you're committed to that one model? Where is your level of commitment? Because if it is not six months, I can tell you right now, it's not going to work. It doesn't mean you're going to spend six months, but you've got to be willing to do that. You've got to be willing to give everything you've got. There are 
other people vying for these jobs. There are people who have been doing this for decades, vying for this job. And it doesn't mean that you're going to get that character artist job at the end of the day anyways. But there are people vying for the props job. There are people vying for the environment's job. There are people vying for every aspect to be testers. And if you're not willing to spend six months on a character to show that you want to do this with your life, then at some point somebody's going to see you're not that serious. Now, I know you're serious. You're, you, you just watched this whole thing with me, right? I've been, I've been walking through, I've been talking about all this stuff. I got text written up here, right? You're a visual person. I'm writing a whole bunch of text. I'm talking about a whole bunch of technical stuff. You're still here. I know you're serious. So now we take the next step. Apply to the boot camp, right? Let's have our conversation. Talk about where you are. Make sure that this is a fit for you and it's a fit for us. Make sure you have a sense of how you move, how you move forward in your life. Get a sense of where you are, right? Find out that company. Answer that first question of who or what game. And then start leveling up. Get you in, start moving, your, moving the needle on your skills and your ability. All right, so apply to the boot camp today. Somewhere on this page, you're going to see either below or to the side, you're going to see an application or a link to the application. Click it, go through the process, just fill everything out, then it'll send you a, a schedule, right? So you choose a time in which we can talk. My whole calendar is up there. Me or one of the team, we're going to be available to talk with you, go through things, make sure everything works, and just, just help you get a sense of what's required and what you can do. All right, so I, look, I really look forward to talking to you. Thank you so much for watching all of this. Apply today, and I will see you in the boot camp.